What's up, fam? Welcome to another edition of God Dreamers. My name is Todd Bethel. I'm your host today. And today, it's going to be a family affair. I have two of my siblings um, that's going to be hanging out with us today. We're going to be talking about family dynamics and purpose and how those are intertwined. Um, but before we get into that, I want to introduce my family, my young, my baby sister, Lynn um, Bethel, as well as, well, Lynn, I guess, should I say Lynn Bethel or Lynn Bethel Lawson or Lawson Bethel Lynn? <laughs> it's one of them. <laughs> Bethel, dude. All right. And then my other sister, Lisa Brooks, which is my older sister. She's not the oldest, but she's uh, came before I did. But anyway, welcome, siblings. How y'all doing today? Good. Good. We're good. <laughs> Sweet. So... This is kind of a different God Dreamers edition. Um, I thought about this really, at not, I mean, didn't give it a whole lot of thought, but it kind of came to mind that it would be something kind of cool to do um, and bring in family members and just kind of discuss a little bit about our, our lives growing up together and how some of the situations in our lives have affected us to this day and how we, you know, how we're doing based on some of those experiences. But um, before we get into that, though, I wanted to at least share a little bit quickly about our family in general. Those are originally five of us total, you know, my, my parents um, and five children. You know, two of them were deceased. My oldest, Bridget, uh, died back in 2014. Judy um, died in 1998. And so, and then our father just passed away back in 2014 too. So it's only four of us left now that are still alive and kicking. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of the fine family dynamic that we kind of grew up on and up until recently. But um, I wanted to open the floor up um, to you guys. I'm going to ask this question. How would you characterize your life growing up in the Bethel household? And I'll, I'll leave it up to which one you, you guys want to start with. <laughs> I guess Lisa's laughing, so she's going to start. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, wow. How would I characterize growing up in a household? Um, I guess in our early days, um, I think it was fun, um, busy. Um, I think we were, we were close when we were little. Um, I think that... Um, I'm trying to sum it up in, in, in a few words. But I think that the family we were back then is kind of something that's missing now. Um, because everybody's so busy and and a lot of family the family dynamic has changed tremendously over the years. You know, I remember us sitting around the table having Sunday dinners, which is like um kind of obsolete now <laughs> with a lot of people. But we would, you know, we um did fun things like, you know, dad would take us to the park and um, on trips, road trips, and um, we would take a, you know, take us to the track, and we'd run with him, and we'd do karate, and we'd be playing. We had a, I think we had a close family back then, because back then it wasn't a lot of the distractions that we had now, um, you know, with electronics and uh, social media and all that kind of stuff. Some of the element of closeness is gone, but I think we were we were a pretty close family back then, you know. What about you, Lynn? Um, they love the baby, so she. Some of the things we experienced early on, they were real small. Yeah, she was tiny. Because um, it's, it's a ten-year gap between the oldest and the youngest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What I remember is the same. Of it, um, we were really active, and that um, it seemed like there was they kept us active, or and I just remember being really active, and I remember feeling like there was, you know, that you could accomplish things. Like I talk to people now and I don't feel that all parents instill um, certain confidences in you. Like, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. Cause even back then I remember conversations um, about entrepreneurship and, you know, encourage, mm -hmm. being encouraged, like, okay, you can do whatever you want to do. Just put your mind to it. And I think back then, um, well, for me, early seventies, it, maybe that wasn't a conversation that was had in a lot of households. It was still like, even though our parents worked jobs, but they still, you know, daddy anyway, you know, dealt with entrepreneurship from an early, from what I remember from an early age. 
So I just remember that there was this encouragement that was there that you could do whatever you wanted to do. And so I just tried to just do as much as I could with just different things, you know, throughout my life. I think that was the foundation that was set. Um, and I realize now that that's not what everybody gets when they're growing up. Yeah, that's true. I think um, growing up in the, um, you know, pops would always instill in us the to do our best and, you know, always excel in anything that we decided to do. And I guess because, you know, if you think about it, their generation, they were the first generation out of their families to go to college or, you know, go to higher education because both our parents kind of grew up in, I wouldn't say poverty, but they grew up not having a whole lot. I mean, I think both of them lived in single homes, single room homes or close to single room homes growing up. I know with, with dad, he you know, grew up in the Bahamas and West End, and basically they just lived off the land. I mean, they had, to, they, they had chickens and they had their own vegetables and they would go fishing. And I think mom kind of you know grew up in kind of a, a same similar environment, of course, but in Augusta, Georgia. Um, but I think, you know, from their experiences, they really drilled in us to say, hey, you know, you know we came, we, we, we had basically nothing, but, you know, we were able to achieve these things based on just hard work and dedication and being focused. And I think dad and mom did the same thing for us, you know, said, hey, you know, the only limitation is you, <laughs> basically. And so they kind of really instilled in us to really go after things. I think um, yeah, definitely the entrepreneurial spirit, I know dad had couple of businesses um even when he worked i remember remember the, remember the shop we had in nassau mm -hmm. the uh, electronic mm -hmm. mix and max. i don't know if you remember that lane but it's mm -hmm. they're called electronic mix and max and so it's supposed to be an electronic <laughs> shop but in that electronic shop we had like <laughs> i would say groceries but they had everything but electronics we, didn't have no in there. we just basically yeah. had mix and max mm -hmm. <laughs> i used to love going in there though because i remember we used to go after school and go and he would put us to work. You know, we, would, yeah. we would service the, um, you know, the customers. Yeah. Uh, we would stock and do inventory and all those cool things. I don't, Lynn, I don't know if you remember all that stuff. Yeah. I, I remember just, the shop, but I don't remember a whole lot about it. But I do remember it. I can yeah. see it literally. I can yeah, see I know. Yeah. That's that kind of visual too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it was fun. So you know, he, so we saw the entrepreneurship even in, and even when we moved to the states. He he still, he, yeah, ended up before he. Truly, well, actually, when he retired, he had a another shop, a storefront that he used to do TV repair um, and so forth. So, yeah, he always had that um, desire to uh, be, become an entrepreneur and actually did. He was a business owner for, for, for a while. So I guess that's kind of instilled in us that desire to be entrepreneurs, even though I have not really done fair well in that area. But I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so um, what were some of the challenges you guys um, experienced, I guess, growing up? And I'm, you know, when I talk about challenges, I'm just thinking in terms of what are, what, what were some of the experiences that you may have personally faced, or maybe even collectively, that's kind of directed to where your life is today, uh, good or bad? Um, but it, it, you guys want to share a little bit about that? Well, I guess I go first this time. <laughs> um, so I think by the time that I was growing up, like you guys were kind of going off in your own directions. And I think that they were tired by the time <laughs> that I was. Five I was, kids. Yeah. I'd be tired. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like I didn't have some of those conversations that, like adulting conversations that I could have, could have benefited me, you know. So when it comes to relationships, when it came to money, credit, you know, all of those things. Now I understand that that was a different era, and um, the, that generation of people didn't really communicate that much. Like now, everybody's like in therapy, or you know, communication is a big thing now. Um, so those conversations weren't really. I don't remember having them or like when it came to sex, you know, you all know, just, you know, <laughs> like keep your legs closed, you know, don't do the whole, you know, don't do the that was the gist of it from, from one parent and daddy didn't have nothing to say whatsoever. <laughs> whatsoever. So, 
um, those things would have helped, like especially <laughs> like money and you know investing, because you know for us too, we grew up in a very you know higher end middle class background for I hate to say our race, like but honestly for that that era. So this you know late sixties, early seventies to the eighties, we he had a you know he was he had a good good job. <laughs> You know, job is yeah. Yeah, like he 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 was you know a good provider, cheap, but he was a good provider. (laughs) (laughs) And so I just think some of those conversations we could have I would have benefited from having those conversations about money because we weren't struggling. We were we were doing. I mean, he was doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Too. I mean, but she, you know, she. Well, retired or left work early, but she was a nurse, so she was, you know, could have been doing well too. Yeah, I think I think they um I don't know. I always said I felt like you only can teach what you know. Mm-hmm. Um and I think from that, you know, coming from the environment but that they came from was, you know, that I mean the thing that I know he constantly drilled in was, you know, go to college, you know, get a career. Um, do, you know, remember, he really drilled in getting, you know, good grades, getting good grades, good grades, because they're going to be, you know, they're going to check out your transcript. You know, that's all I used to remember him talking about. Transcript, 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 mm-hmm. uh, get good grades. But he didn't, but I, he didn't really, well, he definitely didn't talk to me about, you know, relationships and sex and stuff like that. I kind of had to figure that out on my own. And then I think mom tried to talk to me when I was in college. I'm like, mom, it's kind of late now. <laughs> I'm late to talk about that. Okay. I was like, "Mom, you know, you're late, but I appreciate you sharing it." <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, he, so, yeah, he didn't. He didn't really. I mean, he was a, he was an excellent provider, but when it came down to, it was not until later on in life that he really started digging deep into asking you how you really were. But early on, it was kind of like he was just not engaged emotionally like that to us. Um, and so I think in, in some senses, I think that hurt, um, um, especially you guys, the females um, of the family. Um, and But anyway, Lisa, I mean, we, we, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it's like, I, I, I think about that and I think about what I said before, because daddy would be like, you know, the park and play with us and play his guitar, we jump around. And then the other part of that was, he wasn't very, um, what is it, vocal or communicated in terms of the, the, the deeper things? If that's yeah. what you say it, you know, he didn't, I don't know if it's because he didn't know how, or maybe he didn't get that coming up. Um, so he didn't know how to give that. He said, you can't give what you don't have. Um, I think a lot of their generation was raised, but you know, you just, you're seen and not heard, and, you know, just, you didn't, talk grown, you know, you couldn't be in grown folk conversation and stuff like that. So a lot of things that they should have talked about, they really didn't. And I think it's more because they just didn't know or they, they didn't think about it like that back then. But um, me being second to the oldest, I kind of feel like um, like I was in a shuffle. <laughs> I mean, in terms of, you know, because Bridget was the oldest and then Lynn was the baby. So I was kind of like in the middle trying to find my, you know, my rhythm or my way, whatever, with five kids, you know, um, even though we did things together at times, it was kind of challenging to get that individual attention. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like kind of like I figured things out on my own. Um, and you know, we, we had a good family dynamic, I think, but then we had some some dysfunction too. Um, and as you dysfunction? And older, Never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had some dysfunction. <laughs> uh, just being transparent, you know, it's like we had times where, you know, where, um, you know, our parents, they didn't know how to, they sometimes didn't know how to communicate. And it came off as them, you know, kind of button heads at times in front of us and things yeah. like that, which caused us to, 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 you know, pattern some of that stuff as we got older, you know, because you, you kind of do what you see or you, you, you mimic what you see. Yeah, that's a better mm-hmm. way to say it. I'm not saying it was all bad, but at times I think those things now as we're older, we can look back and say, wow, you know, maybe it should have been like this or maybe... They could have told us about that, or maybe you know we'd had this coming up, we wouldn't be dealing with some of the things we're dealing with now. Um, um, and um, not in a bad way, but in a good way too. 
uh, on yeah. both sides of it, you know? Um, I think right now, I think I wish that um, we had talked about um, the more intimate things, like you said, sex, and like um, dealing with your your inferiorities or, you know, just dealing with, with real issues. We just didn't dig deep into yeah, that. We maybe even um, stress the surface of it mostly. I think you had to figure out on your own. Um, and so now that I'm like 60, it's like, wow, I'm looking back and, and trying to get my, myself in alignment from the things that I might not have gotten when I was little. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, like some shortcomings and things I'm seeing in me. And I'm like, wow, that's been there all this time. But it wasn't because they were trying to keep it from us. They just didn't know how to do that or share that or give that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, you know, it was... So it's both sides of it. And when I look at it, it's like, you know, they, they, they gave us the best they could. Um, and, you know, mom raised us up in church, which I thank God for. Um, and daddy, he, he came along after the scene. After the scene. <laughs> yeah. Many, <laughs> many years <laughs> later. Many years later. <laughs> well, at least he came along. Yeah, but he came along, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, all in all, they were good parents. I think they yeah, did the best definitely. they could. You know, they had their flaws and their issues and stuff like that, like every family does. You know, because no family is perfect. And um, I think now we might have had a little dysfunction back then, but now the dysfunction is way bigger and, and way deeper with the family now because you got so many different dynamics of family. You, know, you got the single parent families. And back then, I don't know if anybody we knew that was single parents. So you got that dynamic. You've got the, all the other dynamics, you know, the, 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 the separated and the. Um, all the other stuff that's going on with the family, you know, yeah, and all that other stuff. So it's like the family is like, where is the real core of it anymore? You know, a lot of stuff is lost, like communication, um, support, um, unity, um, closeness. You know, and everybody's living in different cities and different states, and so all, a lot of the family dynamic to me is like it's missing, and it's kind of sad because you know I think about times we went outside and played. Um, marbles in the dirt and climb trees and <laughs> you know you'd be outside playing for hours and then now the kids now they they look at you like what's that I mean like they have no point of reference because now it's like go out you know just not go outside and play it's you know pick up your towel pick up your phone pick up your it's 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 totally different you know and some of it's good and some of it's not good but I'm yeah. glad that we got the we got the basics growing up you know yeah. some things we didn't get. But thank God, along the way, we've, we've learned some things. We picked it up. Where they left off, we picked up. Yeah. Yeah, I think growing up overall, I mean, I have great experiences. Um, I mean, particularly in the Bahamas. Because, right? I, I, you know, we had a fairly good community family-wise, but also even in the neighborhood. I mean, all the kids in the neighborhood that are the same age, we all did stuff together. Where yeah, we, we, you know, we raced down the street or we mm -hmm. played softball. Or we played marbles or, mm -hmm. you know, you know, there was a community. And yeah. so, like, you know, it was fun. I mean, we'd get home from school and we would, you know, get out and go outside and play or go into the bushes and <laughs> break out and be stung and all that stuff. But it was overall, or be chased by dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, it was, it was fun. Um, I mean, it, we just had a, a really good time. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you guys um, as far as purpose at Lisa go. Lisa, come back. Bye. Come back. <laughs> um, purpose. Um, do you think, well, let me, before I even get to that, uh, I think the other family dynamic too that kind of put some strain on our, our household was that, you know, dad was from the Bahamas, mom was from the States. And when we moved to the Bahamas, I think mom's sense of family was, I think she felt separated because all of our sisters and brothers were all on the state side. And so yeah. they're really only family. She, and then, you know, dad's side of the family was good, but then there was, even there was some kind of weird dynamics going on there as well, where there were some challenges and she never really felt accepted for whatever reason. And so that stress along with not, you know, being away from home in a foreign land created tension in the marriage as well. And I think, um, you know, and we saw that kind of develop to the point where, you know, we would every summer, mom would save up money and then take us all back to the States. We'll spend literally the whole summer in the stateside to the 
to like the day before school started and she would get to come back because that's how much she wanted to be in the States and not oh, you know, just get away. Um, and so I think that in itself was kind of stressful in, in terms of the relationship. But I mean, moving fast forward, how do you feel, how do you guys feel as far as that whole dynamic, how, how's that, how's that affected you or, or molded or shaped you to who you are? At least you kind of touched on a little bit as far as relationships and having, if, especially the, the girls in our family having some challenges with relationships. But what, what do you think is that? Why, 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 why is that? You, you guys know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to blame? Right. Time. Please, please blame. Out of the way, you to have a bad relationship. <laughs> yeah, I did blame you. I'm not saying that all the relationships were bad. Don't get, don't get me wrong. I'm the same. But there will, I mean, if we're transparent about it, we've had yeah. some challenges in terms of relationships. Yeah, true. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that because um, my mom and dad had to, like you said, because of us being there and it caused tension in the marriage and stuff like that. I think um, some things that dad was lacking, um, we, as we got older, we kind of, I don't know if it's because of what we didn't get coming up, we got into relationships that weren't the best. Um, I don't know if it's because maybe daddy didn't do a lot of talking like he should have or engaged more in terms of, you know, his dating and telling us about, you know, men and all that kind of stuff. Um, he didn't get into that portion. So we had to kind of find out through trial and error. And I don't know if it's maybe some kind of a, a pattern or a cycle with our family. Um, we have had, you know, issues with wrong relationships. And um, with mom, I guess because she heard that her father passed when she was 14, I think. She was young, so she didn't have that male um, role model. You know, she, she she remembered some things when they were growing up, and she would mention sometimes. But for the most part, like learning about boys and all that kind of stuff, she didn't get that either. So I think both of those things between her um, lacking some stuff in that area, and then daddy not talking, or and because they didn't communicate good at times about relationship stuff, it kind of affected us and and how we. You know, as we got older, the relationships we got in, and um, things that we deal with, you know, even now maybe, um, to be honest, I think that it had a, some of it had a good effect and some of it didn't. Um, and I think Daddy could have been a little bit more vocal and said some things and stepped up and did some things. Um, but I don't know if it's because he just, I wouldn't say he didn't care. I just feel like he, I don't know, he would be like, well, don't do this or don't do that. And basically, that was it. <laughs> he didn't go into any other. Yeah, he ain't really. It wasn't no kind of, let me sit down and talk to you about this. Bring him here. Let's talk that. You know, bring the guy here. Let's talk. He talked, but he didn't get deep. He kind of was like surfacing with stuff. And I think it affected us, to the, the, the girls, to the point of where we, our self-esteem or our self, knowing who we are as women or how, how special and valuable we are, um, he didn't, he didn't really instill that too much. He would say things, but not to the point of you know, like building us up as, as girls, like you're queens and you don't accept this yeah. and put up with that. He didn't do that. So we kind of had to go through the school of hard knocks with this stuff. And I speak personally for myself. Um, but, and I don't know if it's, like I said, if it's because he, he didn't intentionally do it. I just think it's because he didn't get that. And I don't know how dad, yeah. you know, his mom and dad got along. I'm, I'm sure they had their issues, especially with, Ten, eleven, how many kids? So he said yeah. that daddy had a big family, yeah. So I'm sure they probably had, you know, dealt with the same stuff. But back then, it's like you just shh, you didn't talk about stuff. You just kind of, you know, swept it under the rug. Um, but yeah, I think fast forward, and I think now I've, I've thought a lot more about it. Being where I am now, even at sixty, um, still dealing with some issues from childhood that I'm trying to purge from. Does that make sense? Um, some deep-rooted stuff. Because, you know, like, sometimes things will be there. You're not even aware of it. You've been dealing, living with it so long, you don't even know it's there until somebody checks you on it or you hear something or something triggers and you're like, wow, I've been doing that or I've been harboring that or I've been thinking like that or whatever all these years and now I, here I am at this age trying to 
you know, get myself right. <laughs> but um, that's kind of where I am with it now. Um, not in a bad way, you know, because mom and dad, you know, they're 90. Well, she's 90, 91 to be, soon to be 91. And dad's gone on. So, you know, that's neither here nor there now. It's up to us, I guess, from where we are now to make the best of it and learn from it and grow from it and then fix some stuff. You know, because see, back then they didn't do counseling and stuff. It is, it's kind of like, you know, you just had issues and, and you never talked about them. You just kind of just swept it under the rug, like I said, or you didn't just, shh, don't talk about it. But then it, it festers in some other way. And But see, now you have counseling, you have all kinds of different avenues that you can get help or work through things. And thank God, you know, because back then they didn't talk about it. It's just like, just be quiet, don't say nothing. And um, yeah. I think that's a, a Beth of Wolf's clone. And probably a Hammond thing, too, because it was kind of like, shh, all these, you know, don't talk about it, just... You know, people don't know, just don't say nothing, just keep it quiet. But that's not good, though, because then it'll come out in some other form, like, you know, either through alcoholism or drug addiction or some other kind of way, you know, that's not good. So that's kind of where I am on it. Not in a negative way, but um, this made me think now. It's like we got to we gotta make sure things are right so our kids will repeat the same cycles, you know, that we had to go through or we went through, you know? Yeah. What about you, Lynn? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hey, go back. Uh, we're well, we're gonna be on for the next hour. <laughs> what was the question again? I'm sorry, like, I was, no, I'm I was just saying. Talking. I was just saying. You know, was there? You know, were how did you navigate through some of the I guess challenges growing up, and you know, to where you know how, how you are today? Some of those challenges kind of shaped you know who you are today. You know, good or bad. I mean, you know, I just wanted you to say, you know express that what was that you know what, what how did you process and how did you become aware of of those challenges later on in life like today and how and how you you know dealing with it okay um so it is definitely the, the lack of um communication um and also i think the lack of feeling supported in relationship side that i think that had the biggest impact on me because i just chose wrong i don't know whatever if people whatever feelings get hurt okay so oh well <laughs> but i just i chose wrong in the relationship area and and so that had where i was at the time um coming into the relationship i was in a vulnerable state i see that now and so I attracted somebody and I, you know, I created that situation. I see that now, but going through it was like sleeping with the enemy. It was, it was really bad for, for decades until I left. And even after that, it's still, you know, it's, it, it had a lasting Im impact on me, but I now see that I went through that even though it was difficult, uh, it, it was for a reason. Mm -hmm. Everything that I've gone through has been for a reason. Um, and it's mm -hmm. all, you know, the good and the bad. Um, there was a lot of bad, <laughs> a lot of bad, and not just in relationship, you know, with relationship, but also like with the deaths of like Bridget and Judy, that was like, you know, and daddy. Mm -hmm. Those were things that I, like, the processing of that is like I'm still processing it mm -hmm. I'm in a better place and I understand because when Judy died that was I was 28 yeah. so that was 1998 I remember at her funerals like asking God just to like give me clarity because I was like stuff don't make sense I need clarity and from that point I went through like a journey of just trying to like to understand like life and understand you know purpose and and understand like try to understand or dig for truth what, what i could resonate with the truth for me and so that has taken me on this like long journey but you know <laughs> with all of that you know i also created these situations that weren't necessarily good for me in those moments but jump to where i am today i see why i may not <laughs> be happy with all of my decisions but i think they've made me the person that i am um today but also I'm, i have a weird view of things because 
I don't, I used to think purpose was a really big deal. Now I just feel like we're here to experience. We're here to, to have a full experience, whatever that is. You know, some things may be good, some things may not be good. Are we, did I come down here to, to do a specific career? No, I don't think so. I'm just here to, to create. That's, that's, and I think every per person's vision of what they're here for is different, but I think I'm just here to experience and create. And wherever that leads me, um, I'm cool with that. You know, of course I want to, you know, be a billionaire, but as long as I feel like I'm in my purpose, as far as just being able to create, I think I'm happy. But yeah, so wrapping it back up, it's the relationship thing took me on a journey. The relationships and the deaths took me on a journey to where I am now, where I feel stuff is not perfect, but I definitely can see the light at the end of the tunnel because for a very, very long time, it was extremely dark, extremely, extremely dark. And then also with my you know, marriage and the people surrounding that situation, I see a lot of mental illness. So that kind of is part of the journey too. I see a lot of mental illness. So that processing that along with everything else has been very interesting. It's not, it, it, it wasn't a journey for no, uh, ain't for no punks. <laughs> it was definitely not for no punks. You can't be punk. You know, it's deep, but um, for overall it's for the, for the better. And I just want to say this, that I don't want to come back to earth, but if there's a, if we, a chance was reincarnating, I ain't coming back here. <laughs> Maybe else. I'm done. Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, life, I mean, I you know, it's it, I guess with life, you know, it's, I always see it as either you look at the glass half full or half empty, right? So mm. I mean, it's a bad thing. I mean, we all go through some challenging, time, challenging times. And sometimes we, we make decisions that are not the best for us. Sometimes we're, it's out of our control as far as, you know, with how things happen. I think in my particular case, um, I think the, way, the reason why I'm the way I am today is partially because, like, for example, we, mom and dad were not really great communicators. And I think that's trickled down to all of us where we don't really, we hold things in. We don't really let out how we really feel about something. And then when we do, we kind of explode with it, right? Um, and we're non-confrontational, which is good, but then it's bad, especially if it's something that's toxic and we don't address it. And I know I'm guilty of that. If, if I, you know, if I'm dealing with something that's not really good, I, I just hold it in until I can't hold it anymore. Um, was that? Passive aggressive, we all got that, yeah. I'm not passive aggressive. <laughs> I remember a friend of mine told me that the other day. He's like, "Yeah, you pass progressive." I'm like, "Am I? I'm laid back." But no, I've had moments where I've kind of flipped too. Um, so, yeah, that's, yeah. But yeah, I think. But I think a lot of that had to do with you know, mom and dad not really um, being able to, to communicate, and I think that's kind of passed on to us where we we have a, a challenge. Doing that now, my, you know, Pina, my wife, she don't have any issues with letting no, them let, let know. Know. <laughs> she has no problem with that, but, but, I, but I, but I do. I think, um, and then I guess moving forward, um, I think overall, I think my life, I think late, I think my life was driven by things pops drilled in me to you know do you know go, go to college you know do engineering and he was an engineer so i was you know i became an engineer but the weird thing about it now is as i'm looking at my life i'm i'm, I'm asking god and i was like lord did i did i choose the right career did i was that really something that you called me to do um so i'm questioning that stuff now because it's not it's not it's not, it's not that i can't do it because i can do it very well but i'm not really totally fulfilled and so at this stage in my life now I'm, I'm more like, I don't want to do the traditional thing that everybody else was instilled to do as far as that generation. And, and granted, that generation, that was the, that was the road to success. You know, you know, the, you know, th that generation was, if you go to college, you're pretty much going to be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
and 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 and, and, that, and, and those times that's true because most people who went to college ended up you know having really pretty good careers but that's no longer the the, the uh, paradigm and things have shifted in that that's no longer a guarantee but but still i mean all these years up until this point in time now that i'm in my you know late 50s i'm i'm thinking Ugh. I'm not saying that I regret it, but I'm just feel like I'm, I'm at the stage of my life now where I'm, I, I wonder if that was really the path I, I should have been on, and and it, it, it's a little frustrating. But at the same time, it's good now that I'm kind of realizing it and knowing, okay, what can I do now to change that traje trajectory so that I can, um, you know, do something that I think God has called me to do uh, mm -hmm. to make a difference. And, and really, my 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 mindset now is is to pour into people as opposed to being poured into. That's kind of where I am now, um, and you know, take the skills and the experiences that I've, I've kind of dealt with over a couple of years, and and teach hopefully you know teach younger people that hey, this this is not the road to go down and so forth. So that's kind of where I'm feeling right now. Yeah. About you guys, and they were closed. <laughs> <laughs> if you can go on forever talking about this stuff. <laughs> I, I agree, um, you know, because back then, like you said, you know, they, they pushed um, going to school, getting an education and all that kind of stuff. It wasn't about what gifts you had or what talents you had or any of that kind of stuff, I guess, because that's not how they were brought up or raised. So we kind of did things to please our parents more so um, than something that we really, really wanted to do or really felt like we were supposed to do. I know I changed my, I changed things like I don't know how many times. <laughs> I'm still changing today. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like when it's like you know how you 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 know where you're like you know say Lynn is very creative. It just you know just oozes from her. She's just creative. So for her to go and try to be a, a lawyer or a, a doctor because you know she that's what. You know, parents were telling you to do it, they push you to do that, then she would be like a fish out of water. And I know so many people, I know people personally, that friends that I have that went to school and got degrees and they're not even nowhere near the field that they graduated in because they hate it. It's like, I don't want to do, I mean, they worked in it for a while and they're not even in it now. And so I look back and I was like, wow, I'm glad I kind of, I skipped around to different things because I didn't feel that, you know, like you, like when I, I don't want to be in, um, in something and I know it wasn't what my giftings were. See, now I know that I'm creative too. And I think our whole family is creative. I think it just comes out in different forms. You're, you're musical and, you know, with the, the engineering and the, or the different things, you got the filming and the editing, that kind of stuff. That's your artistic gift. And Lens is with the fashion and then the marketing and all that kind of stuff. And then mine is with the jewelry making and all that kind of stuff. And each, you know, each one of us have artistic, even our family, our kids are artistic. You know, a lot of them draw and paint and um, make, you know, design clothes. So our family, I think, strong from both sides is the artistic gift. But then, like, if, if we push our kids to, like we were, you know, go to school, you know, get a degree, and instead of saying, you know, what, what gifts are in you, because, like, Lydia, say, for instance, she's, she's just, she um, got accepted into um, cosmetology school, so she's starting the end of next month. But it took her a year. She said, Mom, I just want a gap year because I, don't know what I want to do. And I was kind of like, not stumped, but I was kind of like, you know what? Let's just pray and ask God what your gifts are. Let's just see, you know? So she went through working. She's worked at Legoland and had another job or two and stuff like that. And she finally came to a decision like, mom, I just, I love to do hair. And that's a gift. She's good at it. She braided mine. She braided Rajani's the other day. She braids, you know, all of her hair and stuff like that. But I let her kind of see, you know, what's in her. And I asked God, you know, what gift things are in her? Or what gift things are in me? I'm still asking them, like, okay, God, what are my gifts? You know, what are my siblings' gifts? What are my nieces and nephews' gifts? Because if we don't pull from that, then you're not going to be happy. And you'll be jumping from job to job, or you'll never be satisfied. You know what I'm saying? It's like you just be doing yeah. stuff, and you won't find your niche. But um, it takes that to find it. So now she found her niche. You know, she wants to do hair. She wants to go further in that. And she says she wants to do some other things, too. But right now, that's what she's focused on. But um, like you said, you know, like now at the age we are, it's, it's a time to be, be content. You know, you got to be doing what you love. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it? Yeah, I, I think the kids. Yeah, I think the kids. Uh, I know um, 
early on, we were trying to <laughs> push that same mindset, like our parents pushed on my on us to my kids, and they they actually pushed back. I mean, um, Jordan in particular. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I'm, you know, don't make me want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. Um, Eighteen thousand dollars later, I'm like, oh crap! I wish you didn't go to school because it's <laughs> yeah, because it's um, expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, but you know, the kids these days, um, I mean, and you know, you don't necessarily have to go to college um, these days. You know, you have you can just, you know, you take these short courses. You can go get on YouTube, get certified in certain areas, and. You're good to go. And a lot of these kids, you know, do their YouTube and their Twitch channels and, you know, and, and millionaires. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the things things have definitely changed um, as far as, um, you know, going after what you love to do and skilled and skilled to do it. And and it's something that people want to pay money for. I mean, all those things have to kind of align. I mean, you could be really good at picking flowers, but, you know, <laughs> how are you going to make money picking flowers? But you put it together in some type of a, you know, arrangement, you know what I mean? So, so all those, you know, the, the skill set, the desire and the, the and, and, and people wanting to pay for that, all those things have to align in order for you to, you know, be successful. So, but anyway, um, Lynn, you got any final words before we close out? Um. <laughs> any words, any words of encouragement? <laughs> Um, let's see. So I would suggest that be very um, mindful of your thoughts. And, um, you know, as a person who's coming out of like an anxiety situation, um, you know, menopause induced thing, <laughs> you know, to keep it honest, Menopause-induced anxiety, where I developed agoraphobia, and and um, now coming out of that cycle, I realized, you know, like I said, all of this kind of comes together into um, the full experience. But I realized that my my thoughts have a lot of power, and our brains can take us places where um, we may not want to go <laughs> if we if we pay attention to to what we're thinking. So, I mean, you know, and everybody's different. You know, they're like, I said, there's mental illness and sometimes you can't help what your thoughts are. But for the, the, the people who are um, not suffering with a mental illness, just try to control your thoughts and align your thoughts with how you feel. Because when you feel bad, you tend to attract more things to make you feel bad. And when you are aligned with feeling good, even if it's small things, you attract more positive things to you. So that that's just my suggestion is just be really mindful of, of where your head is and then, you know, where your heart is, like your feelings. Cool. True. Lisa? Um, hmm. Final thoughts. Um, keep your family first. Um, like, cause, you know, I look Unless at they cray cray and you keep them Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, last. <laughs> that qualifies. <laughs> <laughs> that has qualified. <laughs> like, but, you know, overall, like, with now, everybody's so busy doing so much and everybody's kind of just like, Ugh. just stay close as you can and, and talk more, you know, like with your kids, with your family. Um, talk more, communicate better. Um, and just find, I don't know, a happy place, a joyful place, a peaceful place um, in yourself first, because um, you can't spread any peace or, or joy if you don't have any. Um, and just stay close, you know. Um, like you said, it is qualified. <laughs> because it's crazy, you don't want to stay. <laughs> but, you know, overall, just like, you know, talk to your kids and stuff, because I was thinking about the kids and stuff, and like, at times I'm, I'm busy and I'm like, they want to talk or they want to, you know, mom or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'll get back to it. And then I, and I think about it and like, God will convict me like, well, you should have, you know, took time, 10 minutes, sat down and talked to them. Don't be so busy that you can't, you know, talk and, and, and try to find that time together. Even if it's just sitting down having dinner sometimes and talking or, or getting in the car and driving somewhere, you know, and I know what everybody's in different places and different, but as much as you can as a family, try to keep that that closeness, you know? Because yeah. there's so much happening now to try to tear a family up. You gotta be intentional 
to um to do that. Sometimes it's it's not as easy, especially when you have grown kids. Um, <laughs> my, but you have to kind of find a, a niche, a way to kind of get to them, to talk to them, or get them to open up to talk to you. And, and most times they will, if something's really pressing, if they feel like they can, they will. But just, you know, stay close and, and try to keep peace. You know, keep peace, because in this yeah. hour you really need it, you know. Yeah. I think for me, I mean, I think the bottom line for me has been just being Christ-centered. Um, having Christ in every aspect of your life, because I think if you don't have him, then you're more prone to, you're going to fall anyway, but if you have him, you're going to fall and bounce back up and learn. And, and then you, your, your emphasis is not so much on you, but on how you can be you know, a blessing to your wife, how you can be a blessing to your kids. And, and I know with our kids, it's been um, as, you know, there's stages of relationships, but I think if you can keep the communication, if you if you keep the door open for your kids to come to you, because a lot of times they just shut you out because they if you're, you're old and you don't know, you know yeah, what they're exactly. what you're talking about. But if you leave the door open, um, then they will come around. I, you know, as our, our, our kids have gotten older, they want to talk more. They they they're asking about life serious questions and and want you know want want advice and insight. And I'm like, wow, they're asking me. <laughs> this it was a few years ago. They, I couldn't even say anything to me. Dad, stop lecturing me. Mm -hmm. well, but now they're coming to me and, and, <laughs> and asking for advice and 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 you know making how to make these proper decisions. So I think you know, if you keep the door open, yeah. allow, allow your family members, you know, um, to come in, but also you know be truthful and honest, but in a way that's not confrontational, but. Um, out of love, I guess, right? And I know between us, I know we we got to do better in terms of communicating and and because we're we're the you know between mom and, and us three, we're the only ones left of this generation, yeah. and so um uh, so uh, we we just have to just be more intentional uh, about you know loving each other and caring for each other um, and helping each other, um, and then you know things you know challenges are going to happen. You know there are going to be times when we may not agree. Um, we cuss each other out, but we gotta cuss each other out in love. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but but yeah, but but thank you guys. I mean, thank you guys for you know being on this call. It's been really great. Um, this is the first time we've ever done something like this, so um, it's been. Thank you for being transparent. Um, maybe we will do this again, phase two. Maybe we we'll get our kids or something. You know, be a part of it as well. But anyway, um, thank you guys for being a part of this uh, episode of God Dreamers. Um, like I always said before, if you know of anybody or you yourself would like to share your story, you know, please reach out to us through uh, social media. We'd be more than happy to, um, to share your story to the world. So until next time, God bless you guys. Y'all take care. Bye. Thanks for having us. <laughs>